What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So Novigrad just came out, the expansion and Syndicate, the new faction now exists. Um, so I decided I would do a top five must craft gold cards review. Um, these cards, you basically have to craft them and put them into every Syndicate deck because they're just that good. They're, they're really, really strong cards uh, and, and the rest of your deck can kind of be built around these cards so starting off we have siggy this card's 12 provisions four strength intimidate profit four for every unique gang category in your starting deck increase his initial profit by one so there are five gangs uh it's pretty easy to get these five gangs into your deck um four of them are all good fire sworn is pretty bad but you could just throw one of bronze in there uh and you get all five so um yeah if you do this, it's a 13 for 12, which is really good. And it also has fantastic synergy with the Flying Redanian. Um, I wouldn't say this 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 card right here, the Flying Redanian, is not in the top five crafts. But um, it does pair very well with it. So if you are looking for a bit of extra tempo in round one uh, and you are playing Siggy, uh, it is a very good card. But you need to also run Renew. So if you're going to run Siggy... And you're going to run Flying Redanian, you need Renew so that you can play Siggy again in another round to pull out the Flying Redanian. So uh, Flying Redanian, I think, is contingent on whether or not you run Renew. I played a lot of Renew today, and I really, really like it. I even went as far as running Royal Decree for Siggy because it's just that good. Uh, getting Siggy in round one uh, and consistently pulling out Flying Redanian is really good tempo. Uh, so highly, highly recommend Siggy. Flying Redanian, you can run. Uh, just remember, Renew is a really good card with Siggy. So um, just keep that in mind. If you don't have the provisions to be running Renew in the deck, uh, my advice should be don't run Flying Redanian just because it's going to be a little harder to pull it out. Uh, and you typically do want to pull this out multiple times uh, if you can. So uh, Siggy, top card, just high provision, high value, allows you to stack up a ton of coins. Um Allows you to spend lots of coins uh, very, very quickly. Super explosive. With Flying Redanian, allows you to bleed in round two. Um, I'll play this in round one, renew it in round two, and just hard, hard bleed. Uh, because it's it's so explosive. This card is insanely good. The Intimidate goes off every now and then. Honestly, it could have... It, 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 intimidate could be removed, and it would still be auto-includes. Fantastic card. Run this card and everything. Our next card is actually two cards. Um, th this does count as two separate cards because they are two separate cards. Um, but it is the Ox Serret of Syndicate. Uh, it is the Borsity Brothers. Um, they have very similar text. They're both seven provisions. They're both four strength. Uh, they both have profit two on play. Uh, and the text below that is, if the other one is in the graveyard, increase the initial profit by two. And both of them have a fee two, ranged or melee. Uh, either do two damage or boost a unit by two. So these are your bread and butter of Syndicate. They allow you to spend your coins because, you know, you're getting lots of coins with other cards and you need a way to spend them. And this is a great way to do so. Uh, the first one, you're getting six for seven value. The next one, you're getting eight for seven value. So they break even. Uh, they are fee cards, which are super important. And they're removal. Um, do keep in mind, depending on what you're playing against, is going to determine uh, which one you want to play in round one. This is assuming you draw both, uh, but that's not too uncommon. Uh, if you've ever played Nilfgaard, drawing Ox and Sarah in your opening hand does happen a decent amount of times. So uh, if you're playing against a heavy engine faction, such as Northern Realms, or yeah, I guess really only Northern Realms, um, you're going to be wanting to play the boost card in round one and save the uh, removal for round three because typically removing all your opponent's engines is going to win you the game. So uh, the flip would be you queue into something like no unit or few unit AQ. Uh, you want to be playing the removal one in round one because they're typically not going to be playing a lot of units in round three. So you're going to be wanting to spend your coins on just boosting whatever you have on the board. Uh, so keeping the ranged one for round three is better against decks that just play removal or very few units so that you can get the full value out of your coins. So yeah, th these cards are going to be in every syndicate deck forever until or unless these cards get nerfed because they're just really, really good. They're just insanely good. Um, they're easy point slams with your coins and they just break even on play. Great cards. Moving along, we have 
Freak Show. This card is six provision, six strength, insanity, fee one, give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn. If insanity was used, damage it by one instead. So insanity is whenever you don't have coins, you can take um, damage onto this card. The reason why this card is insane is because it's flexible. It's extremely flexible. You play this card, uh, you can kill any five strength engine or unit that you need to. Um, which is nuts, right? If people compare this card to Parasite, but the only thing comparable is that they're both six provisions and they can remove stuff. Except, let's say your opponent plays an Arbalist. You don't want to Parasite an Arbalist. That's terrible. You lose three points. Whereas this, you can just ping for three. Cool. Uh, it's also a point blower for coins, which is nice. Uh, if you have a bunch of coins and you need to spend them, you can just give all your opponents bleed one, uh, and that's effectively damaging all them all by one, which is really nice. Um, yeah, th this card is completely broken. Um, and one of the reasons why it's so good is because this card exists. Apothecary, this card is four provisions, three strength, deploy melee, heal an allied unit, deploy range, boost an allied unit by two, tribute one, combine both of the abilities. So uh, if you play Freak Show, and you ping off five, so Freak Show's at one, and then the next turn you play Apothecary, it heals it for five, um, and then you can heal, um, boost it by two. So it's a 10 point play. Um, is a 10 for four good? Yeah, that's, that's, I'd say that's pretty decent. Um, Apothecary is absolutely broken. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't count the tribute because the best deck to be running this in is a King of Beggars deck, which I think is the best leader right now. Um, but if you're not playing a King of Beggars, then you do have to pay the tribute one. And then it's a terrible card. It's it's only a nine for four. Uh, yeah, so uh, absolutely insane card, Apothecary. Um, Freak Show, obviously, pushing that uh, immensely. This card is... If you don't want to craft any of the cards, this should be the first one you craft because this card is absolutely mind-blowingly broken. This card is so good. Uh, you can use this to set up Scorches, Regis, Muzzles, Removal. This, this has endless amounts of uses. I use this to kill my Siggy so that I can renew it. This card has so many different uses. Um, such a good card. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic card. Moving along, we have uh, Morels. So this this was an interesting card. Uh, th this last card, the fifth card for the list, I, I was kind of having trouble picking because there, there's a couple like solid cards that you can put into your deck. And, and I'll explain uh, why I didn't pick some of the other cards. But this is basically like pre-nerf or frit. It's, a nine, or it's an eight for nine. It has removal, which is nice against engines. Um, in a King of Beggars deck, the tribute becomes five and you can start removing cards that are nine or higher value. Uh, and the idea is the majority of the time, this is an eight for nine with removal and that's fine. Um, your next best option is to play like a Frit for 10. So you get to save a whole P if you craft this card, uh, which is kind of nice. But if you're playing it against a deck that goes tall, let's say SK or monsters and they get a card that's uh, at nine value or higher, if you're not playing King of Beggars and 10 or higher, um, then all of a sudden this becomes tall removal. Uh, if your opponent's priest gets to 15, you can play this and remove it. If your opponent is playing syndicate and they play Bincy, uh, I've seen Bincy's get up to like 17, 18, and I'll use this for tall removal. It's essentially flex tall removal, which is a really weird concept because we don't have any of those. Uh, every tall removal card like Gigni, Professional, Leo, Geralt, um, all, all these cards have like a minimum, oh, your opponent's card needs to be eight strength. Um, Whereas this doesn't, right? If they're not playing any tall cards, you play it as an eight for nine. If they're playing a tall card, pay some coins, tall removal. Awesome. So yeah, great card. It, it, it's an epic. You're not going to regret crafting it. Um, I, I guess I should have mentioned the three previous cards, uh, the Borsity Brothers and Freak Show are also epics. So uh, all of these cards that I'm mentioning are actually epics, except for Siggy, the first card. Um, yeah, really good card. Uh, I highly suggest you craft it. If you have a frit and you really can't craft this, then I, I, I guess it's not worth crafting. And maybe you want to craft one of these cards instead. So the next two cards, um, this these are like honorable mentions. Uh, I, I decided I'd talk about them anyways because people would have questions like, oh, Pumpkin, why, why didn't you add these cards? These cards are really good. Well, I'll explain. So Philippa, the card on the left, this card's good. I do play it a lot. Um, but... It's good right now because uh, a lot of people are playing Syndicate. 
Uh, a lot of people are playing Flying Redanian because they're realizing how good it is with Siggy Renew. And playing this card right here uh, allows you to steal your opponent's Flying Redanian. And then you get two and they get zero. So you get eight carryover and get, they get zero, which is huge. Uh, this is also why Muzzle's seeing a lot of play right now, uh, which this is why I run <laughs> Philippa and Muzzle in my syndicate list because it's really good to steal your opponent's Flying Redanians. Uh, not to mention stealing Priest is good. Stealing any engine is good. Um, you can steal a nine. I, I steal Freak Show with Philippa because Freak Show is just that good. It's a good card. Why isn't it in top five? Here's why. Because it's a meta-oriented card, right? If we go into a control meta, this card kind of falls off. Uh, in a super heavy control meta, cards like Philippa and Muzzle aren't that good because if you're not stealing engines, then you're typically losing value. So Philippa right now in this instance of the meta is probably in the top five. Uh, you would bump morales down and put this card up. Um, but I don't know how the meta is going to shift. I, I, anything could happen. Um, people could just all start running removal, in which case this card is pretty bad. Uh, Syndicate could get nerfed in a week, and then who knows? Uh, maybe Northern Realms becomes broken, and Philippa is really good. So where Philippa stands is super uh, meta-oriented. If you have unlimited scraps, go ahead and craft it. It's a great card. It's a lot of fun to use. Uh, it's a great way to blow coins. Yeah. Uh, and then the next card to the right of Philippa, um, Kalkstein, I believe. Seven provisions, five strength, profit two. So on play, it's a seven for seven. That's just good enough. Uh, fee two, purify a unit. This is another card that's actually really good right now in this meta. The reason why it's not in top five is the same reason as Philippa. Um, while they're both very good in this current meta, that could change. Uh, and I, I don't want to suggest uh, a card that potentially is very good right now. And with, I don't know, meta shifts or a card getting nerfed, uh, becomes unplayable or bad. I don't know if this card will ever become unplayable, but the Purify is really important right now because Bounty is seeing play. People are running Bounty cards in Syndicate, uh, and you can Purify them off. Typically, uh, when they play Caleb, they don't play Caleb and then kill the unit. They play Caleb, they give Bounty on two or three units, and then the turn after, uh, they start killing all the Bounties and wiping your board. Uh, that gives you a window of one turn where you can play Kalkstein uh, and remove all those bounties and basically win the game. Um, so th this card's very good tech. Uh, what's also neat with this card is if you muzzle one of your opponent's cards, you can unlock it and then you can have that engine for yourself. So that's kind of cool. It's a good card. Uh, it's an epic. My guess is you're probably not going to regret throwing it into a Syndicate deck. Um, Unless it's a super heavy removal meta, in which case this card's not very good because it doesn't really do much. Um, but yeah, th this is probably an auto include in most Syndicate decks at the moment. That could obviously change if uh, Bounty gets nerfed or people stop playing Bounty. But uh, yeah, both of these cards are fantastic. It it's really hard to make a top five when uh, a, a lot of these cards are so close together. Uh, and I do have one more Hall of Fame, not Hall of Fame, um, honorable mention. It is Caleb. Uh, we mentioned a few seconds ago. Eight provisions, five strength, profit three, fee three, melee, place a bounty on an enemy unit. Uh, the way bounty works is it is a status, so you can remove it with purify, which I just mentioned. Um, but the idea is you play this, you give two to three units on your opponent's side of the board bounty, and from there you kill all the bounty cards with this card right here, Executioner, uh, and it pays for itself, and you basically just get to wipe two or three cards off the board. Now, um, the reason this isn't in top five is because I'm still unsure how much I like bounty. I've played like a really heavy bounty deck with all, all the different bounty cards. Um, and I actually found that the best way to play bounty is actually just to play these two cards. Uh, play one Caleb, play two Executioners, that's it. Don't play any other bounty cards. The idea is you get into a round, you play Siggy, you get nine coins, uh, or I guess six coins. Maybe don't play Siggy, maybe play, uh what's it called, Swindle, or play Siggy and spend three coins, go ahead and play Caleb, give three units bounty, uh, and then follow it up with an Executioner, wipe all those cards off the board, uh, basically for free. Um, the reason why this isn't top five is because, well, if everyone starts playing Kalkstein, then this card sucks a lot. You're going to spend a bunch of coins, effectively like nine coins, and then Kalkstein's going to wipe all of it off. And yeah, you just blew nine coins. Uh, grant, granted, he has to spend six, but you still lose three coins on that trade. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm unsure how good Bounty is. Um, it, it can be very good uh, in a control-heavy meta. It's pretty bad if they're not playing a, a decent amount of units. You typically want to place Bounty on like a 
three or so. Um, there's also another bounty card. It's a gold. I forget the name. Uh, it basically is a melee lock card and it destroys a bounty card. Um, some people like this card and like run it with Caleb, but the issue with that is it's a two card combo. And if you don't draw the other, it's pretty bad, like really bad. Uh, one without the other is completely useless. So you have two options. Uh, don't play it or play a ton of bounty. And what I found with a ton of bounty is uh, if you don't draw executioner, your bounty cards are useless. So um, this is a nice small package that you could basically throw into any syndicate deck. Two executioners, one Caleb. Uh, the idea is I just mulligan the executioners away until I find Caleb and then I keep the executioners uh, because the executioners, they're okay. I mean, it, I guess it's similar to a, um, what's it called? A blacksmith, uh, except instead of uh, boosting your side of the board, you get to bleed your opponent's cards, which isn't bad. You just spread it across all their units. Um, actually, you could potentially get away with dropping a blacksmith for an executioner, but mm, if they don't have a lot of units on the board, it's pretty bad. So you're probably better off sticking to a, a blacksmith. Maybe if you're running two executioners, you can cut one blacksmith. Anyways, we're, we're getting sidetracked. Uh, this combo is quite good. Um, it doesn't make top five because Kalkstein exists, uh, and we are in a syndicate meta, so everyone can play Kalkstein. So, yeah, and, and it's a little gimmicky. It is draw dependent, which is why it don't make the top five list, but it doesn't mean they're good cards. Uh, if you're looking to play Bounty, I would highly suggest playing Caleb and Executioner. You can play more than that, but you're going to very quickly realize, uh, it can brick. Sometimes you get like a bounty card in round three and you have no executioner and you're just playing trash and it feels really bad. So instead of playing gimmicky cards that potentially have a lot of value, I just decided we'll play these two cards uh, that consistently get value with each other as long as you have both of them uh, and you can always mulligan away. Once again, Caleb, let's say you don't draw executioner is still an eight for eight on play. That's fine, right? If you don't draw executioner, you just don't place bounty or... Uh, you don't place Bounty unless you have um, the Boar City Brother that uh, pings unit, and then you can utilize Bounty that way by just killing cards normally. Um, so yeah, those are my top five crafts. I, I know I did some honorable mentions. Uh, I, I thought I would throw those in those, throw them in there just because people would have questions. So I decided, I, I, I guess if you really want, it's a top eight. Sure, may, maybe it's top eight. But uh, yeah, those first five are probably auto-included in every Syndicate deck. They are just extremely strong. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think that uh, other cards should have been in this list. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.